All right, so quick video today. I just pushed live a uh, major update to the standard VR character um, that overhauls how the movement is done for it. Uh, ever since I first made this plugin, the original VR character movement was kind of a hack. It was the first thing I got working. Whew, calling's messing up. It was the first thing I got working. It was, um, it worked. But I told myself, you know, the day that something breaks down with it or it doesn't work for a purpose, I'll remake it and I'll do it better. And surprisingly, it lasted this long without me really running into an issue, <laughs> including multiplayer and um, general game use. It worked pretty good. But I finally found something that it couldn't do without major overhauls. So I said, screw it. Now would be the time for me to do the complete rewrite. And so I did that. And the thing that it couldn't do was the B cannot walk off ledges boolean for characters on the engine. It couldn't do it. You couldn't walk up to an edge and it would stop you from falling off. Uh, it's not a commonly used boolean anyways in the engine, let alone in VR. But I mean, it bugged me that it didn't work. So now it does. With the new system, you can actually take that on and it will actually prevent you from walking off of ledges. It won't be fun because you'll hit it and you'll start getting the sliding motion, but you can do it if you want. However, the upside to this change is that literally everything else about how the character moves is smoother and cleaner than it used to be. The reason for that is before what I used to do was a, the hacking method was I would take the difference at the uh, HMD moved in the la between this and the last frame, and I would say, okay, let's trace that direction. And if it hits nothing, just be okay, just let it ride, don't do anything. But if it hits, say, a wall, it input a little bit of um, movement input in the direction of that trace so that the character movement would actually impact into the wall and get stopped, blocked by it. Um, had a c couple problems. One, you had to run the trace every every frame, and um, you had to make sure that the value of the additional VR input vector was such that it would replicate correctly. And this is kind of a pain, and it didn't it didn't really fit into a clean movement system, which is why I've been surprised that it worked so well for so long. What I'm doing now instead of that is I'm taking that vector of difference between the last frame and the current frame that the headset moved, you know, its delta position, and I'm rewinding the character movement in the negative of that delta. So let's say I'm walking forward like this, the new movement system is actually sending the character back and then replaying that forward movement so that all of the um, character movement just ties into my headset movement. So I'll walk forward, it'll rewind me, and then play me back, so that when I hit the stair, I step up on it. This inadvertently solves an issue where I was injecting additional momentum into the step-up function so that you could correctly step up with the old system, and it was causing some annoyances on wall slide, which is completely gone now. Wall slide works exactly how it's supposed to, no issues. This also means that it's easy to take that value and uh, round it, so I am rounding it by, I'm rounding it to one hundredth of a U unit, and then replicating that. So I have a clean variable that I can replicate. It helps keep consistency between the server and the client in multiplayer scenarios. So it's a lot easier to keep from um, losing sync between the client and the server now, because it has that same value that they'll always use, and it's easy to network replicate it. There wasn't much sync being lost to begin with, but there's even less now. And everything in multiplayer just works slightly cleaner and slightly better now. At the same time as I did this, um, I went through and made a couple other changes while I was at it. I cleaned up some sections, started to throw out some of the root motion code that Epic has in the character, because we don't need it. You're not going to be using root motion in VR if you are. Well, that's up to you, but I'm not going to support it because it's just extra performance overhead. 
and I can't see a possible reason for it. If you're running movement off of animations in VR for the main character, it's kind of iffy. But um, I also made it so that now there's events for when the slide back starts happening, when you hit a wall or something that blocks you. Now it'll do a, an event. Um, I think it's a start pushback. I think it's event start pushback in the character. And then when you stop being pushed back, it does event end pushback. So now if you want, you can be like, oh, they're sliding. Let's darken their vision so you know it's not a problem for people that have an issue with it. Or let's spawn a glowing box around them so they have a stable visual point of contact when they're hitting this. And then the world moving around them doesn't you know, have a problem with it. The latter method is actually a pretty good way of doing it. It's having basically like a chaperone appear when you hit here so you have a static frame of reference when the world's moving. Something else I did was the root capsule because of how I'm not actually moving the component um, when I walk around. Overlaps with the root capsule would trigger multiple times. Well, it would trigger once a frame. Is it hit something, it would say, hey, hit it during movement, and then it'd get to the end of a scoped movement, and it would never run through a list of what is still overlapping after the movement's over. So it would just say, hey, you overlapped, and then you stopped overlapping all in the same frame. Now I check, and if the um, if you had overlaps from scoped movement to the end of scoped movement, and there's nothing detected as overlapping at the end of movement, meaning that it's just a headset movement only, then it will um, double check and see if there's any overlaps at the end of the movement. So you get the correct begin overlap, end overlap, as it should work. There's a lot of little things I fixed in this uh, push, but I can't remember all of them. They're in the patch notes. I just wanted to go over the basics of how I changed that. I don't know why the calling's been acting weird in 4.18. The walls keep disappearing. Huh. It's like Frust from calling's messing up. Um, I have to make a change on interactables for multiplayer that I discovered while debugging this. Nothing major, um, just a little sync issue in multiplayer. Uh, I have to figure out a problem with the new Epic Late Update. Where if you change the world scale, the Late Update doesn't accept the new changed world scale and you get offset controllers. And if you turn off Late Updates and you don't do that. And I verified this in the standard template with an unmodified pawn with all of Epic's original code and it still does it. So it's a problem on their end, and I need to f figure out what it is and bug report it to them so that we don't have issues. But I'd like if people would give this new movement system a try, because it is um, a rewrite. And as far as I know, and have tested, and I've tested it fairly rigorously, it is more stable and better in pretty much every way. But I may have missed something. So let me know if you find something. Thank you. Oh, also my child was born, so I'm going to be low on time still for a while, and then hopefully back to having some time to work on stuff more often.